Hey guys, it's Hexer. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about common methods that uh, hackers would use to um, get into your system. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, in in uh, the first thing is common exploits. A weakness within an operating system or a program would be like SQL injection, cross-site scripting, cross-site forge. Uh, request forgery. Um, make sure you update all the time. Update daily. Your if you're running a server or your programs, run, uh, do updates on your entire operating system. Um, vulnerability scanners. Uh, they are tools used to scan computers or devices for network uh, on the network for uh, um, weaknesses. Port scanners are commonly used. Uh, make sure you use a good firewall. So, um, when there, if you think there is someone, or just use a good firewall. It it will help it so help you so they don't uh, ping you or scan your computer. Uh, password cracking. The process of getting gathering passwords from uh, that has been stored on a computer system. Weak encryption guessing. Uh, dictionary attacks, brute force attack, are all examples. Uh, weak encryption. If they have weak encryption, or you have weak encryption on your password, more likely to get cracked easily. Uh, guessing. If you have a weak password again, they can easily guess. Like your name, pet names, right there. That would be an example. Dictionary attacks. All this is a text file that has all a whole bunch of common uh, passwords in it and then people and then they use that to scan or crack with and um, it in that if the password is in that directory or that text file it'll get cracked so uh, brute force attack same thing all it is is guessing getting in um, moving on Okay, packet sniffer. An application or program used to capture data flowing through a network which can be used to capture passwords, emails, text, and more. Uh, packet sniffers, uh, that's all, basically what it, I just told you. Like, It will capture passwords, emails, um, instant messaging stuff, everything. So, uh, packet sniffers. To prevent that from happening, make sure you encrypt everything you do over the network. Spoofing attack. False information sent to one program, um, system, or website thinking that's legit and treats it as legit, a legitimate uh, system. So it trusts it and then allows you to gain confidential information such as name, usernames and passwords and maybe even more like phone numbers and such. Just depends. Uh, there's IP spoofing attacks. There's MAC address spoofing attacks. There's uh, D DNS spoofing attacks. Um, root kits is designed to conceal the compromise of a computer system. It replaces the computer system's bin uh, binaries, systems binaries, so that the legitimate user has no uh, um has no idea that the intruder is on their system. So uh, it's very hard to remove, detect. Make sure you use antivirus, anti-root kit. Uh, an anti-root kit will get rid of it. Um, but if you're using Linux, you're going to rarely have that happen to you. There's very small amount of Linux viruses out there. So um, social network, uh, uh, a social um, Engineering, sorry, I don't know why I said social networking. A way of getting people to re reveal their sensitive information by just um, impersonating yourself as someone else and getting them to, or, so you can obtain information. So basically what that means is that if you... Uh, go to a company and you can say you're someone else and then they could believe you and then give the, you information so that would be an example um Trojan horse a program that is used to gain information or take full control of a system could be used as a backdoor okay backdoor all it is is that 
it's another way to back, go back in if they update their software and their security. Um, full control of the system with the Trojan horse. They got access to everything. It, all rights, everything. Um, a virus is a self-replicating program that spreads by inserting copies of itself into other executable documents, music, or images. So, think a virus as the real life in biology, if you ever took biology class. Uh, it just spreads and spreads and spreads and infects everything until you cure it. And that's what a nanovirus is for, to get rid of that. Uh, worm. Also, a self-replicating program, but instead travels through computer networks without intervention, user intervention. <coughs> Unlike a virus, it doesn't need to attach itself to a program. So once it's activated, and, um, it's launched, it will spread throughout a network. And once it spreads through a network, it's just going to keep spreading. So make sure you get rid of a worm as soon as you can. Keylogger, a tool designed to record every keystroke that affected on the machine to gain information, username, and password. This can be good for good, uh, uh, used for good and bad. For a good example would be if you're a boss and you're, you want to know what your employee's going to when they're on their computer, you could use that to know what websites they're going to and such, so you know if they're doing their actual work. Um, for bad, what happens is that a hacker would send the keylogger or attach it to a program like earlier, like I said, to an executable document, an image, or music. And then if the victim runs those files, it will uh, install the keylogger in the machine. The hacker just sits back and then waits for all the uh, keystrokes to go through, and then it'll be sent to their email, the hacker's email, or the hacker's web server. Uh, continuing on. Okay, in conclusion, for all of the things I just mentioned, you want prevention. So make sure you update your operating system and your programs daily. Install firewall, firewall and antivirus. Use WPA, WPA2 wireless security. Turn off unused services or programs. Use very strong passwords. Uh, don't use the same ones. If you're using it to log in your machine, don't use the same password for your email and your Facebook and your other websites you go to. Um, use autofillers. Roboform is for Windows, and LastPass is for all platforms. And LastPass is free. Roboform you have to pay for. And um, basically, it fills in the user, the email, and the password for you. You don't have to type it in. It's safe because you only have to type in one password. And if you're not using the same passwords for the other stuff, and if they happen to get your master password, they're not going to be able to get into all the other stuff because those are automatically signed in. Uh, use a fingerprint scanner. That's optional. If you have one like I do on my laptop, um, you can use a fingerprint scanner. You don't have to. If you don't have one, use a strong password. Uh, limit your number of downloads. Uh, feel uncomfortable. Don't do it. Don't use it. What I mean by that is, if you don't feel comfortable downloading a file, then don't download it. If you're not, don't feel safe to, at a public Wi-Fi for f a free Wi-Fi. Don't don't use it then. Um, well, um, thanks for watching, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think of my video, and if you have any. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Send me a message. I uh, appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to part three.